Um, okay, first of all, it's been great to be here this week after not traveling for three years. It's my second trip in three weeks, um, but really nice to reconnect with scientists and in particular to start to get to know a lot of the ECRAF um, work. And I'm, my only regret is we didn't really, I, there are probably still half the ECRAF scientists in this room I haven't actually met. So I'm unfortunately that we didn't have kind of that kind of mixing that would have been really nice. Um, but I guess over the years, we will get to know each other. Um, so I think we all interpreted a little differently what this task was about, but I'm going to go ahead with uh, what I pulled together with the support of several other people in the room, as well as online um, with some of the inputs from the week. So I'm going to talk about governance, equity, and well-being ways forward. Next slide, please. So you can click through this. My takeaways from the week. Keep going. One more click. Everything is complex. One more click. And everything is complicated. Oh, sorry, everything is connected. Okay. Um, so next slide, please. What I heard this week was that we have a lot of different umbrellas for talking about complexity and connection as integration. We heard this from landscape approaches, agroecological principles, stewardship, approaches to restoration, inclusive business, ecosystem adaptation, lots of different umbrellas. Next slide. That presents an opportunity because each umbrella connects us to a particular global discourse and a global community. But there's also a risk in terms of how are we connecting all of this to the ground? We don't wanna float away like Mary Poppins there. Next slide. We have another opportunity, which is, so I was just thinking with no more TPPs, maybe we need a TPP to integrate all the TPPs. Because obviously, if we're all looking at complexity and we think everything is connected, then there's a, there ought to be a lot of complementarity and similarity across all of these different umbrellas. But we may also find that there's some contradictions and trade-offs. So it seems like we need to, these are, these are governance issues to me. So this is what I'm, uh, where I'm coming from. Next slide, please. So my connection is, my, my connection, my question is how do we use all these different frameworks I can look here, to connect in a coherent way with all these different communities? And are the umbrellas the same at the core or are they different? And what is at the core? Do we have the same handle on these umbrellas or not? Next slide. So what are our core commonalities? Just some thoughts about this. Transformations don't come from science. They come from how people use it. Heard that today again, this innovation, agency, all of these things is what do we do with what, what, we're, um, what we're learning. Involving everybody is not a transformational strategy. It's bringing people to the table, but you've got to have a strategy behind that. Transformations require agency, and particularly the agency of those who do not have it now. And though some panels, such as agroecology and stewardship, talked about agency, a lot didn't. But I was really excited just today to hear some, well, I'll come, I'll come to that later because I'll, I'll come to my, my main argument in a few minutes. Next slide, please. So what's at the core? Everything we do about, at C4 ECRAF is about people at the core. Governance, farmers, agency, empowerment, equality, tenure and other rights, well-being, these are all transversal. And so what I just heard in the last hour, the Lee talking about restoration, completely integrating the social and the ecological. Um, Anya, our comparative advantage is that we work in managed landscapes. That's people managing landscapes. Uh, Roland mentioned the people filter on what's appropriate for biodiversity. Twee just talked about social justice and climate justice, and Michael about the money and value chains being in the livelihoods. That's all about people at the core. But what I heard this, I didn't hear a lot about people this week. I think we all see it as implicit in what we do. Sorry, no, I can't see. Um, <laughs> they're mostly, people are mostly not drawn out in the presentation of our results. So we're all addressing these themes, but we're not showing this, and we're not showing how we're addressing these themes, these themes with people at the core. Next slide. So for me, one of the key questions in terms of moving forward is, how do we distinguish ourselves from all the institutions and projects that are not putting people at the core? Because it's not coming out. And I'll make this comment because we were, we were just uh, interviewing people to hire for the new gender position. And we also had 
someone doing a fundraising strategy for us. These people spent a lot of time on our website and they all came back to us and said, can't quite figure out what, what you're about. <laughs> and that's not a good sign. I think we're missing some really key messaging here. Um, so I think we need to negotiate a bit in C4ECraft about our core commonalities. Our focus on people, I think, is our biggest comparative advantage. I also think we need to reflect a bit around these issues of equity and governance goals. Are they goals in and of themselves? How do we see them? What do they mean to us? Or are they instrumental? They're obviously a bit of both, but how do we see them as an institution and how are we gonna take these on? And the other obvious thing that we do that's a real advantage is we build, especially with the merger, we build on the connections from the farmer to the global, from the global to the farmer and the in-betweens. Um, Valentina brought out some of the key issues about working with these middle people and how they can both obstruct or really facilitate change. Next slide. So this is my last slide. For me, I think we all understand transformation means digging up the roots of inequality. It means going in and, and you know, pulling out the, the obstacles, really facing those obstacles. From the opening session, those roots include things like the social norms, attitudes, behaviors, and the social systems that underlie them. They include the power imbalances among food systems actors, as well as the actors in all of the, whichever umbrella you wanna choose, the power inequalities. So for me, getting to the roots means that we understand that frictions and difference of interest and trade-offs, these are our core entry points. It's not the multi-stakeholder part. It's not bringing everyone to the table. It's understanding what's keeping people from talking to each other, what's behind the differences, what's behind um, the inability to, to bring about the transformations we need. One central underlying structure of inequality that I didn't hear a lot about this week, but when I did, it was really important. Wherever land matters, it matters in pretty much everything we do. Land and resource tenure and rights matter. In refugee settings, this came up, in the landscape management and the trees on and off farms, who's gonna grow the trees off the farms? These are all major tenure issues. I think we re really need to remember that these are, this is a cross-cutting and core issue um, to everything we're working on. And Finally, governance and equity. We talk a lot about being context-based. If we have principles when we go into these contexts, we've talked a lot about principles this week and a lot about context, again, with people, working with people. So just as my closing statement, every question about people should be followed by a question about power and inequity, who wins, who loses, and who decides. I think that's the end. <laughs>